Hello, welcome to Kairos Hospital Laboratory, where I'm recording this video from right now. My name is Eyangu James Justin. Uh, this hospital is right in Uganda, in case you're wondering which country I'm recording from. This is Uganda. And uh, I want to take you through some chemistry, particularly urea, B-U-N urea. So how do you test for urea? I've had concerns from my friends who are just beginning chemistry and especially those who are doing uh, running chemistry under semi-automation. They're using semi-automated machines to do chemistry and that makes me think about doing this video and so right now I'm going to take you through everything that you need to be successful in doing this test. First of all, like it's a good routine for us to do. Um, we have to get our glass on because uh, that is our protective item in the lab. Yeah? Okay, so right here I have, uh, I have urea. We keep a cold chain for most of these reagents. We have to keep them between 2 and 8 degrees Celsius. So we have to maintain a cold chain. So, if you can come closer, I would like to show you some... Uh, um, I want to show you the components of uh, this kit. Now, in this kit, number one, there is A1, like you can see. And then we have A2. And then we have B. Reagent B. And we are going to see how we can combine the three chemicals to be successful in testing for urea. So, number one is my test tube there. And because I don't have uh, many tests on my desk right now, I can afford to have just one uh, test tube. And please, don't be a genius. When it comes to test tubes that are so clear like this, yeah, don't be a genius. At least wrap something and label the reagents uh, or the test name. If you're doing triglycerides, for example, you can write there triglycerides. And if you're doing um, a total cholesterol, you can write there total cholesterol. All right. Okay. So. Um, I'm adjusting this micro pipette to 960 microliters. So 960 microliters is what you need of A1, and you, later you're going to need 40 microliters of A2, and then later on you're going to need 1,000 microliters of reagent B. Okay. So, to start with is 960 microliters of A1. So we pipette. Test tube. This one for now can go back into our box. Just waiting for storage. We should take it back to the fridge. And then uh, we need 40 microliters. I guess you notice I have two transfer pipettes. The uh, reason is uh, this one measures smaller volumes. It measures from about uh, 5 microliters to 100, from 5 to 100 microliters. So I've set it to 10, 10 microliters of Sarah. So we're going to need uh, 10 microliters. I hope you can see that. We're going to need 10 microliters. Of 
of patient cell. Okay, so we introduce 10 microliters of patient serum to our mixture. Mixture, solution, I don't know, uh, preparation, whatever you call it. Okay, so we have to intubate this for exactly 10 minutes. So I set my timer to 10 minutes and there we go. So. We are going to allow uh, we are going to allow intubation to take place for at least uh, ten minutes, and uh, after the ten minutes, we add reagent B. We'll be back. So we've uh, waited for about uh, the ten minutes that we've been waiting for. Right now we have about uh, thirty-eight seconds on our timer, and so in the meantime. Uh, you can do something. Uh, get your transfer pipette uh, measurement set to 1000 microliters. Okay, that is at 1000. We have uh, a little time there. Um, we have 10 seconds and it's counting down, so you might want to get my reagent already. This is B. Okay, and you can hear the beep. So we introduce. If you can come closer, you'll notice there's a color change beginning. There's a color change that has begun, and uh, it's going to to keep changing. So we're intubating this for another ten minutes. So setting my timer. 10 minutes and so after the 10 minutes we can run the test and it's very simple if you have watched the other videos then I believe you already know how to run the test and uh, you simply do the same for this but uh, given 10 minutes we're going to come back and run it so um, our 10 minutes are done and uh, we have our uh, urea ready for testing and uh, so you go to the machine and then you set it to test parameter you set it to water blank and then you blank before you run the test you run the blank Blanking is done, it has done the blank, so uh, you, you click on sample, you take it to sample, and then you put in uh, your sample and aspirate. Always making sure that uh, the machine says uh, please aspirate before you aspirate. Uh, if it doesn't tell you to aspirate, then it's not ready for aspirating. So our test is running and it takes about uh, 12 seconds. Do not forget to hit the like button at the bottom of this video or uh, to share it or um, add your comments. Yeah. So this is done, you go to return, you return to this window, then you go to the result window which is right here. And you can have uh, a display of all your tests, right? So that is basically how you can run a test for your rare. Thank you very much for joining me on this test. My name is Ayango James once again. Please feel free to send in your comments. I always love them. And thank you for the feedbacks that have been coming through email. Thank you so much. And I'll be sure to respond to them as much as I can. Thank you very much. Share the video. Have fun in your laboratory. God bless.